Hi guys, welcome back to my series on creating an FPS weapon manager in the Godot game engine. Today we are going to be finally adding a control rig to this FPS manager. I'm going to be doing this with a rig, but it's mostly for demonstration purposes. It's incredibly simple to do, and it's easy to add at any time in your project. So I recommend that you think about adding a control rig when you're further along in your project, but I'm gonna show you now so that you have this for reference, or you can follow along as well. Because the entire point of this weapon manager is to make sure that when you get to this stage of your project, you can add a rig without changing anything or without needing to update animation references that have been baked into your code. If this is your first time watching, I highly recommend that you check out the other videos in this series where we go from a basic kinematic body script to a full FPS weapon manager that you can use to make FPS like games like Half-Life 2 or Doom. If you've been enjoying this series for a while, don't forget to leave a like. And if you haven't already, consider subscribing. We just passed 3000 subscribers, which is very exciting to see. So without anything further, let's get into it. And the first thing we're gonna do is just open up the FPS character scene. First thing we should really do is just save this scene as a separate one. So I'm gonna save it as FPS character with rig. And I'm also gonna update the uh, kinematic body nodes name. And then finally, we're gonna delete the FPS rig that we have currently. And I'm also gonna remove all the resources and the starting weapons, just so that we're back to a base zero, if you had nothing. Um, and we're gonna start from scratch. I've got a rig that I created last year. Uh, it's not perfect, as you can see when I open it up, it's still a full body. We're gonna to have to deal with that. I'll make this available for download, but it's not really finished. So keep that in mind. So the first thing I'm gonna do is just drag this into my scene here. And I will drag it just into the root scene so that it doesn't get too much transforms put on it. I'm just gonna reset the transform and then I'm gonna drag it as a child of the FPS rig. I'm gonna make it local. I didn't properly prepare this rig, so it's got a lot of control nodes. And I'm just gonna remove those because we don't need them. That's from Blender. Um, the other thing is I've separated out the mesh so that we can remove everything except the arms because that's all we need from this mesh. So uh, I'm just gonna go and I'm gonna select all these other meshes that we don't need and I'm gonna move them. So if you've got your own rig, you won't need to do this. All right, so with everything left over, we've got this. We can start to work on actually positioning this rig so you wanna click on the camera and click preview. I'm gonna come back down to our rig and I'm going to just lower it a bit so that it sits a bit better in the frame. I'm gonna check another animation just to see how it looks with the pistol. I think it's a little bit too low, so I'm gonna bring it up a little bit. And also the rifle. And I think I'm happy with its position. So once I'm happy with that, I can move on to the next stage and we'll need to connect the animation player to the weapon manager. So we've got an on ready var animation player here. I wanna make this a little bit easier for your future rigs that you wanna put in or any other work that you wanna do. So I'm just gonna remove that line and we're gonna create a new variable with the exact same name, but it's gonna be an export variable and we're gonna make it equal to an animation player. And so now you can just drag and drop whatever animation player you want. Okay, so now that that's done, we can drag that over into the animation player under the weapon manager. So the next thing that we need to do after that is we need to set up the resources for the three weapons that we have. We've got a rifle, we've got a pistol, and we've got an AK-47. So I'm just gonna come down to where I've got my uh, weapon resources. You can see my farm manager is a bit of a mess, so we're not gonna worry about that. I'm gonna create a new folder and just call it uh, something like, I'm gonna call it something like rig weapon resources. Okay, and I'm gonna create a new resource and I'm gonna create a weapon resource. And I'm just gonna name this first one one and then I'm gonna duplicate that and rename. Actually, I'll, I'll call this AK-47 because I know the names of these resources already. Um, I'll create another one and I'll call it pistol. And the one that I called one, I'll just rename to rifle. Okay, cool. Awesome, so let's go through and set these up. We need to make sure that these animations match exactly the variables in the weapon resource. So we'll come back up, uh, the weapon name, we're just gonna call it uh, rifle for the rifle and um, all these animations. So they're rifle underscore activate for me and it's all pretty consistent with the variable naming. 
So I'm just gonna go through. So for the animations you wanna play, just make sure that they're the same as the animation in the animation player. Um, I'm gonna go through and add some ammo here. It's pretty basic stuff, 30, 60. It's gonna be an auto fire. It's gonna have a 2000 range, damage of one, and it's gonna be hit scan. I don't have a weapon to drop yet, so I'm gonna leave can be dropped unchecked for now. Okay, I'm gonna head to the next weapon. It's gonna be a pistol. This might take you a little bit longer if you don't know the names of your animations. I'm pretty familiar with this rig, so I'm just going to go through and name these. I don't have an out of ammo animation for all of these. I'm going to leave it blank. It's not advisable to not have, like to leave an animation blank for this weapon rig. The behavior won't be as expected. So if you do have like a, a placeholder animation, that's helpful too. I don't. So we're just going to roll with that. Okay, last one is 8K47. And copy that down and just name all these animations as well. And we'll give them some ammo and reserve ammo to start with. Make it auto fire. 2000 range, probably a bit long for an AK 47, but we'll roll with it. Hit scan and then we can go next. Now we need to come back up to the weapon manager and add these resources to the weapon manager. So under the size, we can create three new resources and we can drag and drop these resources into this array and for the start weapon i'll make all three starting weapons and so i'll just type their names in here pistol rifle and ak-47 all right so things should work as normal i just want to show you here just we'll run it just to make it sure it starts and there's no problems we'll delete that fps controller and we'll drag in the new one Okay, so let's run the game and make sure things are working so far. It looks okay, we can spawn in and we can shoot and it looks like the hit scans are working and doing damage to the box, but we can't change weapons yet and that's because we haven't set up the signal. I wanna introduce a new way to connect that signal because if you're changing the rig often, if you're prototyping, you're going to be setting up that connection quite frequently. So. I'm going to come down to the on animation player animation finished and I'm just going to rename that function to make it a little bit shorter. I'm going to call it on animation finished and I'm going to copy that function name and I'm going to come up to the ready function and I'm going to type animation player dot animation finished and then I'm going to say dot connect and then I'm going to paste that callable in on animation finished and now that signal will be connected up at runtime and we should be able to switch weapons here. No problems and automatic firing will work as expected. You can see there, rifle is a bit of a laser. Okay, cool. So we're rolling. Things are looking pretty good. We're not quite done yet though, because we need to add the ability to drop weapons and pick up weapons. So we're going to need to create a couple of rigid bodies for the weapon drop. I'm going to create a new scene with a rigid body and I'm going to drag those models in that I've got for these weapons. So the first one is the pistol. I'll make local and remove the parent node. So I've just got the mesh and I'll click the mesh and click this button that says mesh and create a simplified Trimax collision body. Um, I'll rename this rigid body to pistol and we will drag that script in. I'm having a bit of trouble finding it. So maybe if you know what it is, just type weapon pickup. The weapon name will be pistol. Current ammo will be nine. The reserve ammo will be nine. Uh, these can be any values you want. These are just what I'm picking. And the pickup type is obviously weapon. Okay, so we can save that scene. I'm going to create a new folder under the uh, FPS arms folder. And I'm going to save that there. Cool. Okay, so we need to create two more of these for the uh, rifle and the AK-47. So I drag that rifle in. You can see the rifle is gigantic because I haven't uh, treated it yet. Do the same as before. I'll drag that model in. I'll remove the parent node. So I've just got the mesh and I will change the scale of this. And once again, I'll click that mesh button and click create simplified collision vertex. And I'll do the next one as well while I'm at it. I'll drag in the AK-47, make it, make it local, create a simplified collision convex mesh and change this to AK-47. And also make sure to rename the nodes. Okay, so I'll type pick, weapon pickup and drag that script into the rigid body and I'll name it rifle 3030, that's fine. We save that. And then same with the AK-47, I'll drag that script on. I'll call it AK-47. I'll just give it 20 current, 20 reserve. And obviously it's a pickup type weapon again. So we'll save that as well. And so now we can come back to the FPS weapon manager. And in those resources, we can add those rigid bodies as the weapon to spawn on drop. Okay, so we'll drag it for the pistol. 
make sure you get the right one, not project to load. And uh, also remember as you're doing this to make sure that you check can be dropped so that you can actually drop the weapon. And for the AK-47, I'll do the same. I'll drop that onto weapon drop and check can be dropped. Okay, so we should be able to drop these. Uh, don't forget as well to set up the collision layer. So right now the default is obviously the world. These need to be set up as layer four in our project for weapons and they need to mask the world. All right, so I forgot that on the pistol. I'll come back over and I'll do that for the AK-47 as well. Four and one as the mask and we should be able to run the game. So now we've done that, we can drop the weapon, we can pick up the weapon and things are looking pretty good. Okay, so the next bit of fine tuning that we need to do is the bullet point, which we set up as the place to uh, do a ray cast for the hit scan weapons and also to spawn the weapons. So you would have noticed that those weapons sort of like came out of the face of the camera because that's where the bullet point is right now. So I'm gonna add that animation to the animation player. You will see a warning that says that changes to the imported tracks will not be saved. That pretty much means what it says on the tin. You can't make changes to the imported tracks, but you can add tracks to things that weren't imported. So we can add this bullet point to these animations and it should just work perfectly. So don't worry too much about that error. I'm just gonna come in and move that bullet point to the front of each weapon and key that in. It can be a little bit tedious working in 3D space, so I recommend using the perspective shifter. Just keyboards one, three, and seven. Okay, so now that's there, I can come back. I always like to key it to zero, zero on the reset so that it sort of goes back to zero in the case of not having a weapon or better just be in the center. Okay, so I'll do that for the pistol. I'll come down to the rifle and I'll also key it in there, make sure it's in the right position. Doesn't have to be perfect, as long as it's in a general spot that is gonna make sense for the player. Last thing you want to do is make the ray cast go from a place where you're not expecting it to and ruin the player experience. Okay, so now when we drop the weapon, it should drop out in front of them and our ray cast will be a lot more efficient or a lot more accurate, I should say. Okay, that's great. So let's add those rigid bodies to the scene as well so that we can pick them up. We'll come into the world. I've got the weapon node already. I'm gonna drag all three of those rigid bodies into the world. And I'm just gonna move these around in this scene so that they're positioned. Just to make sure we're gonna test out that these are working normally. Okay, so let's run the game here. You can see the, the rifle is a little bit smaller than the AK-47. We'll have to work on that. We can shoot. Okay, we reduce the ammo down here. I'm gonna empty all my ammo here. And I'm gonna walk over that rifle to make sure that it works as expected. So it's got 60, I believe. And I pick up 60, no problems. Okay guys, that is all for this lesson. That's how you go about adding a rig to this FPS weapon manager system. Just a reminder, of course, that you can do this at any stage of the project. So don't worry too much if you aren't ready for a rig or that your rig isn't fully complete. I'm just doing this to show you how it can be done. The benefit of doing things the way we have is that we can pretty much do this at any stage without breaking anything or having to get into the code. Of course, I had to make a couple of changes there to make things a little bit easier for us. But other than that, you don't need to do anything, which is great. Uh, if this video was helpful, I would love it if you'd like and subscribe. And if you want to connect with me and support my work, you can always join us over at the Patreon, where you can get access to videos early and Discord privileges. Thanks again, and I'll see you next time.